It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Speaking of rebels, I got to imagine you feel a little bit like a rebel if you are a member of the United States House of Representatives and a Republican with the Democrats in control and Nancy Pelosi uh, giving press conferences like she did yesterday. Here's one of those rebels is Congressman Bruce Westerman. He's on the phone with us right now. Bruce, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. I'm back in uh, back in sanctuary in Arkansas. Good. Out of D.C. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen to the uh, well, yeah. So so Arkansas mm-hmm. sort of is a sanctuary, uh, a sanctuary state, but not in the way, <laughs> not in the way that you would think. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, we often uh, tease some of our friends on the Democratic side that uh, aren't necessarily in Speaker Pelosi's court that if they uh, uh, if they speak out against her, we will allow them to come to our office for sanctuary up there. We, <laughs> is that is that is that is yeah. that a thing though? There are there are Democrats up there that are just kind of like uh, you know they don't really agree with her leadership. Well, there's a uh, uh, quite a divide in the Democratic caucus up there right now, and you know, you've got the Democrats that were what would have used to maybe being called blue dog Democrats that weren't necessarily in Pelosi's court. And now you've got, uh, these, I don't know what, what, how you would classify them as, uh, you know, pretty radical left wing extremist Democrats, uh, AOC and Tlaib and Omar, uh, who are also not necessarily in Pelosi's court. So she's having to do quite the balancing act just within her, her caucus it uh, does seem like it she, she seems she's very kind of seems she's scared of uh, people like alexandria ocasio cortez um you know who said that we only had 12 years until the world was going to end because of uh, uh climate change and then she said she was just joking and that anyone who actually believed her uh had the brain the size of a sea sponge then there was a poll done well, I would I would agree with that second part, but I don't think he was joking on the first part. Me neither. Me neither. And then they did a poll, and, um, and like a vast majority of Democrats believe that we've only got twelve years left. So it's like, okay, well, they've got the brains brains the size of a sea sponge. Um, <laughs> well, and all the Democratic uh, candidates for president have embraced her uh, her plan. So, um, what does that tell you? Yeah, it's ex- you're exactly right. Um, how how are things going up there now? I mean, we, we just had the news of the president, uh, you know, giving Bill Barr the authority uh, to look further into these intelligence agencies need to cooperate with uh, the attorney general's investigation into how we got where we are when it comes to Russia and 2016 and everything else. What's the, what, what's the feeling, do you think? Yeah, well, it's uh, the, the same Three Ring Circus and the House Democratic Caucus up there. They're uh, they apparently can't accept anything that uh, comes out of the Mueller report. Now you know they were they were all for it until it didn't say what they wanted to say, and now uh, they're continuing to to beat a dead horse and ride a dead horse. And I I think they're going to stay on that all the way up through the election. Uh, they really uh, I think it's been called Trump derangement syndrome. It, Really, if if there's anything that's going to make President Trump look good, or uh, regardless if it's good for the country or not, they seem to be opposed to it. Um, that's kind of what the attitude is like. Uh, Josh Siegel over at the Washington Examiner earlier this month, back on the eighth of uh, uh, this month, headline: Republican Bruce Westerman proposes curbing Western wildfires through forest management overhaul. What can you tell us about that, Bruce? I'm continuing to work on, on forestry policy. Uh, we've gotten bits and pieces of, of good policy uh, in, like in the Farm Bill, and it's giving the Forest Service more tools and the Bureau of Land Management more tools to go in and do management on uh, the 192 million acres of federal forest land that is spread out across the country. Uh, but we're still really behind the eight ball on that. We're going to continue to see uh, huge, devastating wildfires uh, like we saw last year in California and like we've been seeing uh, on an increasing scale over the past two or three decades. Uh, but we're continuing to work to try to get uh, 
uh, more policy out there and get people working in the forest to thin them and do control burns and, and all those management activities that will make the forest more resilient. I've also got a, uh, there's a disaster relief bill that the Senate passed yesterday when, uh, after we'd actually left, uh, had our final votes of the week and left D.C., the Senate passed a disaster relief bill uh, that had some language in it to help address management activities on the on the Forest Service. And that was actually a, an amendment that I wrote and got uh, a Democrat named Jimmy Panetta from California to co-sponsor the amendment with me. And we got that into the uh, um, the original House version of the disaster relief bill. And the Senate picked it up and put it in, in their bill as well. But, uh, you know, the House isn't in session right now. So we may end up having to go back and vote on this disaster relief bill, uh, which uh, it's a it's an accumulation of of disasters. Uh, yeah. The hurricanes that hit down in the Panhandle of Florida and Georgia, the mm-hmm. wildfires out west, the flooding in the Midwest, and uh, some additional funding for Puerto Rico that got uh, put in the bill. So yeah, I saw that. And we, obviously, we got also you know the hurricane season's uh, going to heat, heat up again uh, starting in June, the June first. Um, back on the wildfire thing, you know, you talk about good policy, like controlled burns, uh, thinning the forest, but you got some people over, from what I've read, you know, in California, that they think there's something wrong with that, that you're not adhering to some sort of, you know, uh, EPA dogma or, or, you know, protect the earth dogma if you don't just let the forests, uh, you know, let them alone. Don't don't have, don't try to manage them at all. So how do you overcome? Yeah, that? It's, well, it's what I call we've we've loved our trees to death. We uh, we won't do any any kind of management, uh, and a lot of this happened because of environmental groups that um, whether or not they started out with good purpose or not, most of them that are opposing the management now are all about uh, raising money and uh, you know having their cause. But there are the, the mainstream environmental groups that understand, uh, you know, the benefits of a healthy forest, they're, they're getting behind more active management. And even out in, uh, in California, uh, this really shocked me, but it shows you how much uh, they're starting to uh, get pressure on this, is Gavin Newsom, the very liberal governor of California, has gone in and waived a lot of state uh, uh, red tape policies that prevent them from uh, doing management on the land out in California. He basically said that, you know, we don't have time to go through all these hurdles to to do the management before the fire season gets here. He says we've got to get in and we've got to act now. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of uh, attitude it's going to take to, to get some of this work done. Uh, there are groups that have weaponized environmental laws, uh, something I didn't even know about until I got into Congress. There's a, a law called the Equal Access to Justice Act. It was put in place during the Civil Rights Movement, um, really with a good purpose to allow someone whose civil rights had been violated uh, by the government who didn't have money uh, to hire a lawyer could actually file suit against the government, and the government would pay the, the legal fees uh, if somebody's civil rights were being violated. Well, these some of the environmental groups have figured out that they can form their own uh, nonprofit, and it may be, you know, a couple of lawyers uh, working out of a, a, a small office somewhere that puts up a website, and they they've got their own little environmental nonprofit. And every time the Forest Service puts a management plan out, regardless of where it is in the country, they can file a suit in federal court under EJA and which is the Equal Access to Justice Act, and they can get their legal fees paid for by the federal government uh, by suing the federal government to stop the management plan, uh, which is not at all about the environment or making forests healthy. It's about uh, these folks being able to uh, uh, run up a lot of uh, hours preparing a, a legal argument, and then uh, many times the courts will reimburse their legal fees based on D.C. Uh, lawyer rates. So it's, uh, there's a racket out there with that. And then you got, you know, some of these other environmental groups that 
um, you know, they don't want you doing anything in the in the forest other than uh, standing back and, and leaving them alone. Uh, and there's there's places where we can let nature uh, run its course, like out in the national parks. You know, Yellowstone National Park. It's got a lot of lodgepole pine in it, and it's going to burn uh, like every 100 years. That's kind of the life expectancy of lodgepole pine, but it's a natural process, and we can we can let it burn and watch it grow back, and we can also see, like from the big fire in the 1980s, there was a, a huge increase in uh, elk population and wolf population after that fire when the uh, uh, the early growth started back out there. So there's a, there's, we know the science on how to do it. Uh, there's just a lot of politics that get in the way of doing it. Yeah, it's it's very it's very frustrating. I, I I know, especially you know, you being a forester, we're talking with Congressman Bruce Westerman uh, from uh, District Four, and uh, uh, we're kind of running out of time. But there's go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say there's some exciting things happening in forestry in Arkansas, the, uh, which we have a lot of forests in our state, and especially in the Fourth District. Uh, there's a lot of uh, new jobs being developed in forestry. Uh, Walmart just announced last week that they're going to build their new corporate headquarters out of mass timbers, which is a great use of forest products. Uh, the University of Arkansas has built some five-story dormitories out of mass timber construction as well. So um, we're seeing some positive things happening with forestry in Arkansas, which is it's been happening that way for quite some time. Um, last question. Do you think the Democrats in the House will impeach President Donald Trump? Uh, they almost can't help themselves, uh, even though they, they really have no evidence or anything to impeach him on. Uh, it's almost like that's what they've made their utmost objective, what they're focused on. And I think, um, you know, with all of Speaker Pelosi's fault, she, is, she does have a pretty savvy political mind. And I think he realizes that's not the best place for them to be politically, but I don't think she can uh, get in front of the snowball and stop it. I think mm -hmm. it's a snowball headed downhill. Wow. Congressman Bruce Westerman, it's always great to have you on, sir. Appreciate the work that you're doing, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, have a great weekend, Paul. All right. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Thank you so bye much, bye. Bruce.